Today we're going to look at ellipses. Now, once again, an ellipse is kind of an elongated circle. Now, from a conic perspective, an ellipse is the set of all points whose sum of the distances from your two foci is the same. In other words, the length of this dotted line here plus the length of this dotted line here it would be the same as I go from here to here. So the length of the two green together or the length of the blue or the length of the red all add up to be the same. So no matter when I start at one point, when I start at one focus, go to the other focus, all those two segments of the same color always add up to be the same distance or the same number. So standard form of an ellipse is in this form here where h and k is your center just like it is for a circle so it's the opposite of what's after the x opposite of what's after the y it's equal to one your y's are over something squared and your x's are over something squared so if h and k is your center you would plot your center how far you go left and right from your center is a a is the square root of 100 is underneath your x's. Since x goes left and right, the square root of this is going to tell you how far to go left and right from your center. How far you go up and down from your center is always related to the square root of what's underneath your y's. y goes up and down, so the square root of what's underneath your y's tells you how far to go up and down. Then we would also have your foci. Your foci are always on your major axes and the distance you are away is C. So sometimes your foci are going to be going up and down because you'd be having a longer axis going up and down. But it's always C units away. A and B are what's underneath here. So A squared and B squared. You subtract them to get your C squared. And it's always the bigger minus the smaller. So that's why we have two options here. How elongated your ellipse is, or how not elongated, how circular it is, is referred to as your eccentricity. It's always the value of C divided by the value of A. Now, ellipses are nice because if you have something that's emitted from one focus, it'll bounce off the edge of the ellipse directly to your other focus. So that's what happens when we try to disintegrate, disintegrate kidney stones. You have the emitter at one focus, and you put your kidney stones at the other focus, and you can use a high frequency shock wave to break up your kidney stone. So, Let's go ahead and find your focus and your vertices of this ellipse and then also graph it. We would know since there's nothing added or subtracted to your x's that your center is 0, 0. Now, the square root of what's underneath your, y, or your x's is 3. So that means you're going to go 3 units left and right from your center. The square root of what's underneath your y's, and y goes up and down, so the square root of that tells you how far to go up and down from your center. So we'll go our center, we'll go three units to the right, we'll go three units left, go to your center, go five up, and five down. That should allow you to have four points to do a rough sketch of your ellipse, and you should get something like this. We would know our major axis is the longer axis, so we went up and down 5, so we know our vertices would be 0, 5, and 0, negative 5. Your foci are going to be on that major axis, C units from your center. So we're going to go B squared minus A squared. It's always the bigger one minus the smaller one. So it would be the 25 minus the 29, or 25 minus the 9 which is 16. Solve that for C, we get plus or minus 4. So our foci are going to be 4 units up, 
and 4 units down. So 0, 4, and 0, negative 4. So let's go from our normal form of an ellipse to the correct form that's easy to find, the center, how far you're going each way, and so on. So we really need to complete the square with the x's and the y's. So I'm going to group the x's together, and I'm going to group the y's together, take that normal number to the other side. Remember, in completing the square, you want to have a 1 in front of your square term. Well, we have that for our x's, but we don't for our y's. So I'm going to take a 2 out of the y's. Then we want to go ahead and complete the square. So we've got to take half of what's in front of the, two, the x, which is a 2. Half of that is 1, and that's what we square. If we add it here, we then also have to add it on the other side of the equal sign. Because what we do to one side of the equal sign, we do to the other side of the equal sign. We'll want to keep it balanced. When we were dealing with parabolas yesterday, we were keeping everything on the same side. So you want to offset it on that same side. But here we're going to opposite sides of the equal sign. And what you do on one side of the equal sign, you want to do on the other side. When we're dealing with this one here, with the y's, we want to take half the 10 and square it. If I add it here, I would then want to add on the other side of the equal sign. But keep in mind, I had a 2 in front of my parentheses. So it was really a 2 times that 5 squared. So it's really a 2 times 5 squared. So my x's will factor into an x plus 1 and another x plus 1. So I could go x plus 1 squared. Bring down my 2, my y's will factor into a y minus 5 and a y minus 5 or a y minus 5 squared. I get 50 plus 1 minus 43 on the right hand side gives me 8. To get it into the proper form, I want to have a 1 over here, so I want to divide everything by 8. So now it's in the proper form. What's after your x, the opposite of that, and the opposite of what's after your y in the proper form is your center. So, the square root of what's underneath x, which happens to be 2 root 2, tells you how far to go left and right from your center. So, we're going to be going left and right from our center, 2 root 2. So, we'll go over here, 2 root 2 away. And we go over this way, the same distance. Now, how far we go up and down from your center is related to the square root of what's underneath your y's, which would be 2. So we're going to go 2 units up and down from your center. Up 2, down 2. And then we could go ahead and draw in your ellipse if we wanted to. But having a nice visual here, even though this is not overly elliptical, it's still somewhat circular, so the eccentricity would be close to zero. It still gives you a visual idea of what's going on. Now, to help you find your vertices, it's at the end of the major axes, which in this case is going left and right, because you were going two at two right and two at two left, which is more than you were going up and down, which was only two up and two down. Since you're going left and right from your center, you know that's only going to affect the x-coordinate of your center. You were at negative 1, and you went left and right 2 at 2. You did not change your height at all. You also know your foci are going to be c units left and right, because that's your major axis from your center. So you have to go the bigger one squared minus the smaller one squared, so it would be 8 minus 4 which is the square root of 4, which is 2. So we're going to go 2 left and right from your center. So you were at negative 1, went right 2, which would put you at positive 1 and 5. And if you were at negative 1, went left 2, that would be negative 3 and comma 5. So let's try to find the equation of our ellipse. And here we're given our foci, and we're given the length of our major axis. So start out by plotting your foci. We would know our center would be 0, 0, because your center is halfway in between your foci. 
the length of our minor axes is 2. So the total length is 2, so that means we're 1 up and we're 1 down. So that is helpful. That tells us our B value. How far left and right we go from our center is our C value. So then we want to go A squared minus B squared is equal to C squared. So once again, C was 3, left and right. We're trying to figure out our A squared, and we were 1 up and down. So we would get A squared to be 10, or A to be the square root of 10. So we're going to go x minus the x coordinate of our center, which was 0, all squared, over the square root of 10 squared. Plus, it would be y minus 0, all squared, over our 1 squared, is equal to 1. So in other words, I just go x squared over 10 plus y squared over 1 is equal to 1. Would you really have to put the y squared over 1? Probably not.